The night is dark, and wind billows around you as you approach the castle Nurgur. A flash of lightning illuminates the dark fortress ahead of you. Flickering torchlight sputters in ruined windows, and the ancient door stands ajar. Dim torchlight illuminates the inside. Suddenly, a scrabble in the darkness. Goblins! Guys, don't throw your dice on the mat. What, don't, all the dice? Don't oh, throw oh, them on the dice! Oh, oh, 20! Oh. There's a 20 in there. There's a 20. I said it is. Get back on track, Hans. All right, boys, let's get back on track. Chuck, you were trying to kill that goblin. But what dice do I roll? <laughs> Let me explain the rules one, one more time. Characters with a specific role in mind. That's why it's called a role-playing game. So you start off by choosing your race, your class. So you try and do stuff, right? So like. And if you're if you want to get into it, your backstory, but that's not important. And so you roll you roll a dice to see if you can do it or not. Because every action you do is defined by a dice roll. All manner of complex dice rolls and stuff from the books, which I don't really understand. Then if you get like a high roll, then you probably can do it. Gameplay wise, essentially, if you want to do something, you roll a dice. And like depending on the number of your roll determines the like degree of efficiency with which you do the thing. Basically d, d is just an applied form of imagination. You can essentially do anything you want. Well, with, with d d it's kind of like sky's the limit, you see. Do whatever you want, really. You can do anything from just simply attacking an enemy to stealing Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber and... So let's say you find like a big spooky dragon and you're like, what am I going to do? But you leave that to the DM who should probably know this better than you. Now you could go the classical right and be like, I stab it and stuff like that. All right, and then Hans tells you if you can do it or not, and so yeah. Or you can like go like off the script. You can maybe, maybe, maybe tame it. Ramming it up the poor, unfortunate. Ride it, take it for a nice walk on the beach, take it to seafood dinner, I don't know. It's kind of all over the place. So, my d, &D character, this girl. is my good pal Chuck Truck. See yeah. the resemblance? Yes. Okay, my character is like essentially, he's like essentially Jimi Hendrix, but he's really short and he's a bard. Just a dwarven cleric, who is called the Marmot of Reglion. Yeah. He plays a mandolin instead of a guitar. I'm playing as Terence the Dragonborn. Okay. Uh, so my character's name is Baccarat, and he's a, a rogue halfling. Uh, he's pretty cool. He wants. He's not really bad or good. Um, he, he has lots of different little uh, things. And he is half dragon, half man, all love. I speak elvish and goblin. He's got a dagger. He uh, can speak common and draconic, and let's see, what else? It's pretty cool. Chuck truck. He likes long walks on the beaches and uh, has a tender side, plays the flute. A long hallway stretches down the corridor. At the end of it, a single goblin snores at a lonesome table. I roll a perception check. A ring of oh, keys yeah. jingles softly on the troll's belt. Alright, I'm going to use my plus five and thievery to steal the keys. It's uh, sleight of hand. Fifth edition, remember? How many editions are there? <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons has had five major renditions from 1974 all the way to 2015. It was made by this guy, Gary Gygax, when he got tired of playing other tabletop games. Then, in 1997, Wizards of the Coast acquired Dungeons and Dragons. They're the same company that makes HeroScape, the comic-oriented game Hero Clicks, and the wildly popular trading card game Magic the Gathering. Like, we kind of just like 
have a laugh while we play and just do it for fun? Well, it's, it's kind of the best way to get together with our friend group. Uh, make some really, really funny scenarios. There's a lot of laughs and uh, a lot of memories too. But we all just kind of get to screw around in more of a creative environment and get to do whatever. I like it for the experience, man. You get, uh, get together, hang out with your friends, and really just stretch your imagination. I like, the, I like the, the whole fantasy aspect. I mean, not every day are you you're walking around and you get assaulted by a, a three inch garden gnome. It's just fun to see, you know, all the humor and fantasy that like we don't usually get in our everyday lives to see it all blended together. One crazy mess. It's something really great, something we all value a lot.